Hello everyone. I am Dr. Ikeda Lal and in today's video I'll be talking to you about management of a posterior polar cataract with nuclear sclerosis in a patient with high hypermetropia and pterygium. So let's look at the biometry. The IOL power here is 36 diopters in right eye and 35 diopters in left. The two important values to look at are the aqueous depth and the astigmatism. The aqueous depth here is adequate at 3 mm and since the astigmatism is less than 1, we can directly go ahead with the cataract surgery. So here with the side port, I am inserting trepan blue dye to stain the anterior capsule and then replacing this with viscoelastic to begin my capsulorexis. I routinely prefer the side port incision to perform capsulorexis using a cystotome as this gives me a very stable anterior chamber. So here the viscoelastic used is HPMC. Now when we are dealing with posterior polar cataracts, it is important to have an adequately sized rexis but we must remember that it should not be too large. A 5 mm, a maximum of 5.5 mm capsulorexis is ideal just in case we need to do an optic capture if we have a PC rent. Now I'm making the main incision with my 2.2 mm keratome and before I begin my hydro delineation, I'm doing a gentle visco dissection. Just very little amount of viscoelastic is being injected under the anterior capsule and then we do the hydro delineation as hydro dissection is contraindicated. Now this viscoelastic provides resistance to the fluid and avoids inadvertent hydro dissection when we are doing the hydro delineation step. Now this patient also has a grade 2 to 3 nuclear sclerosis so here I am going ahead with my trench and once my trench is deep enough I am going to gently crack it into two segments making sure that we do not apply too much pressure as the PC can be very weak in these cases. Now here the aim is to lift up these fragments without rotation. So in posterior polar cataracts, we should avoid the rotation of the lens because the rotation can again cause a posterior capsular rupture. So I gently nudge and lift up one of the nucleus uh, fragments and then emulsify it. And the same thing is being repeated with the other segment. And this is being, uh, we are being able to emulsify this with ease. Now before I come out, I must inject viscoelastic from the side port here because we do not want chamber fluctuation which can again cause dehiscence of the PC. Now I'm using the visco dissection technique here to get my epinucleus up. This helps me in removing the epinucleus very safely and the viscoelastic would again seal the posterior capsular rent if it exists. Now simply we can just aspirate this entire epinuclear sheet and we can see here that uh, the only the cortex is left and the posterior capsular opacification has come out with the posterior epinucleus. Now uh, we are going ahead with a bimanual irrigation aspiration in this case. It is important to remember that if there are a few fibers at the region of the posterior polar cataract, they should not be disturbed and polished because again the posterior capsule can be very weak in these cases. I am inserting a 36 diopter single piece IOL in the bag in this patient and then removing all the viscoelastic thoroughly. Again before I come out, I am injecting an air bubble to avoid chamber collapse. Now this is the left eye of the same patient. The same principles for posterior polar cataract are being followed. I am doing a gentle visco dissection before the hydrodelinear step and then this patient this eye relatively has a softer nucleus so what I'm doing here is I'm removing the anterior epinucleus as well as the cortex so as to free up the nucleus this will help me lift up the entire nucleus and emulsify it with ease so as soon as I begin my trench we can see here that the entire nucleus has been lifted up and then I can very easily divide it into two pieces and then emulsify it safely all the fragments are being fed into the phaco probe keeping keeping a relatively lower bottle height and lower vacuum settings for posterior polar cataracts and then the epinuclear plate is remain removed in the similar fashion following all the principles and using the visco dissection technique thank you so much for your kind attention